Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Presbyterian Church on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I do have a few announcements to get us started this morning. And the first of those is that the Read the Bible class returns this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, as we've been uh, throughout the summer, this is the second class, so I guess it's not really throughout the summer, throughout July, uh, the first and last uh, Tuesday of the month is the Read the Bible class. This is our review of Genesis. Uh, it will be different from the last time, right? Different passage. So if you joined in the Read the Bible class in um, the years bef the year before the pandemic, uh, this is a good opportunity to see something a little different uh, from the Genesis passage. Once again, Tuesday, 6 o'clock, uh, here at the church and online as our hybrid model. Then this Wednesday at 11, our book study continues with chapters 14 and 15 of Nadia Bulls Weber's Pastrix, which is still very difficult to say, so I'm getting better about that every time. Um, and I would encourage you, if you haven't been following along but you want to join in the book study, you can join in at any time. Each chapter really does stand alone, um, though you might need to know a little bit about who she is, but we'll fill you in. If you'd like to know anything about that, just contact the church office, 918-369-3690 or trinity at olp.net. And then as a reminder, this is the month of July and there is no session meeting in July. So if you have your automatic schedule set up for a session meeting every, uh, Sunday, every third Sunday or every fourth Sunday, uh, you can ignore that. There is no session meeting this July. We'll be back in August for our next session meeting. And as always, the Presbyterian Journey class is online on the uh, YouTube page for the, the church. And if you'd be interested in um, checking out any of those classes, uh, they range on Presbyterian history, theology, and a lot on the Book of Confessions. If you're interested in that, uh, there is a link in the This Week at Trinity email that goes out every Monday. Whew. Uh, and the last announcement today. We are live streaming um, from the pulpit today. Our soundboard operators are both out of town. And so if you are interested in learning how to be a soundboard operator so we can prevent the uh, multiple hats being worn in the, pres in the uh, uh, Presbyterian Church pulpit, um, then please let me know. I'd like to have a training sometime after Rally Day uh, in September, so we'll be able to get people trained up on how to use the soundboard and the new video equipment. It would be really great to have two people up there so that there's enough to focus on. Um, so do let me know if you'd like to do that. Whew. Those are my announcements this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, and let us bring in the light of Christ. Let us rise up and be called to worship. Praise the Lord. And it is to sing God's to our God, for God is gracious. 
The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcasts of Israel. God determines their and binds up their wounds. God determines the number of the stars and gives to all of them their names. It's our Lord and abundantly. God's understanding is beyond measure. My friends, God calls us into a time of confession, recognizing those places we have strayed from the path that God has set before us, those places we have missed the mark. And yet God calls us into reconciling with each other, calling us back towards the center, back towards God's love. Let us join together in our prayer of confession this morning. Loving God, you call us to seek peace in solitude and joy in community. Yet sometimes we find that our time alone is filled with anxiety and our time together is filled with strife. Gracious God, teach us to embrace the blessing of your holy community. Warm and stir our hearts so that our time alone does not feel hollow or lonely and our time together does not make us feel erased. Let the fullness of your love lead us to celebrate the Spirit working and moving in every heart and life and deed. Let us take a few moments of silent prayer and reflection. My friends, together we are the body of Christ, and individually too. We will try our best, we will mess up and try again. In God's grace and mercy we know, in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen.
My friends, peace is our gift from Christ's heart into each of our own. And so let us celebrate the joy of that peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share signs of that peace. Would you pray with me, please? God of the ages, where we are scattered, you draw us together. Where we are lost, you gently guide us back to the path. Where we live into hope, you fill us with light. As we hear your word read and preached this day, guide our hearts and minds nearer to you, to follow your way and to let your light shine through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The New Testament reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you have been rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God.
Our Old Testament reading this morning is a very familiar passage from Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 23. Listen now for a word from God for you. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may eat freely of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living thing, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to, and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and God brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At the beginning of the pandemic, There was a woman named Kelly Victoria who was having a hard time with the lockdown. One day she was walking down her street and noticed something that had not been there before. There were some tiny little objects arranged very intentionally in a planter with a note attached. See, there was this little girl who was four years old and she was really lonely. She wanted to do something to make other people happy. So this little girl set up a fairy garden with tiny, brightly colored objects to attract tiny sprites and other magical creatures. And she invited anyone else to add what they had to. Kelly had been going through some things herself and decided that she wanted to brighten the day of her neighbor, who was a total stranger to her. She left a note for the little girl pretending to be a fairy named Sapphire. She said she and her friends made this little tree her home and she would leave a gift for the little girl. But first, she gave the little girl a quest to prove that she was worthy and kind and brave. She asked the little girl to say nice things to other people, to do helpful things, to love others, and to draw a picture for the other fairies living in the tree. The next night, the little girl had already written back and detailed all the nice and helpful and loving and brave things that she had done, along with a personalized drawing for the fairies. Now, in case you are concerned about stranger danger at this point, that would make sense, but Kelly did leave her personal contact information for the girl's parents so that they could you know, verify with her and be assured that this was all meant in innocence. So this little girl, Ileana, and the fairy Sapphire became sort of pen pals during the pandemic. They struck up a friendship, and that made the lockdown more whimsical and beautiful for both of them. This continued for nine months. Then the little girl's mom told Kelly they were moving away, and Eliana was feeling really sad about it. So with the mom's permission, Kelly went to work and got herself all dressed up as Sapphire the fairy, including little pointy ears. She arranged with the mom to let Eliana catch her, leaving a letter and a gift. She told Eliana that she and the fairies were moving too, and that gave them the special power to be human-sized for a day, just to help them move all their stuff. They met and giggled together. Eliana asked her every question she could think of about life as a fairy. 
and her mom confided in Kelly that Eliana truly did become kinder and more creative when she started chatting with her fairy best friend. And Kelly herself was lifted from her loneliness and her heartache. When God created Adam, Adam had a job to do. From the beginning, it was his job to tend this brand new creation, to work the soil and enjoy its fruits. He had a job to do with one very specific restriction. But working, eating, sleeping, and starting all over again are not enough. God wants more for us than that. About from the first moment of creation, God says it is not good that the man should be alone. And up to this point, God's voice has called forth everything that is and called it good. The light and the dark are good. The dry land and the sea are good. The plants and the trees are good. Yet here for the first time, God says something is not good. We were made to be connected, first to the image of God and then continuing out to the rest of creation. God wants a helper, a partner for Adam. So just as Adam had been formed from the dust of the ground, now all the animals and the birds are formed from the ground as well. Now God has a partner in creation, in naming, in celebrating each new life that comes forward. And we can see that God in three persons cannot be lonely. And this newly minted creature, Adam, echoes back to his origins, but how will he find companionship? God opens the way for Adam to name, to explore, to discover each new living thing, to delight in them. They are his friends, but they are not the same as him. To have a partner, you will need one like him, one who reflects God, one who can scratch the surface of eternity together with him. This is the first story of loneliness. This is the story of a God who calls us to connection and to hope. Adam could not conquer loneliness alone. It was divine mercy that brought love and the thrill of knowing and being known into his life. So we see Eve and Adam were kindred spirits, our first example of human love, our pioneers of human closeness and frailty. We know loneliness can be such a powerful force. It can burrow into our hearts and remake our perceptions. As it grows in strength, it can bring us to the point where we start to feel alone, even when we're in a room full of people, even surrounded by friends and loved ones. This longing to be seen, to be with people who really get you, to love and laugh together, it's not icing on the cake in many ways. It is the cake. A study came out recently that revealed a worrying trend, and that is that people are getting lonelier. According to this survey in 1990, 3% of men said they had no close friends. When the same question was asked in 2021, 15% of men said they had no close friends. That is five times as many. Similarly, 2% of women said they had no close friends in 1990, and 10% said the same in 2021. There's also been a dive in the number of people saying they have larger number of friends, but I won't bog you down with all that data. Suffice it to say, 
as we have isolated and locked down, taken on new safety measures and learned to keep our distance from one another, for more reasons than one, it seems that we have been feeding a loneliness that is getting out of control. From stress or exhaustion or maybe simply from habit, many have gotten used to avoiding others, holding up and just learning to live with the loneliness. God tells us that it is not good for us to be alone. God calls us into community. And sometimes community is formed with a chance encounter like Sapphire and Eliana. But don't you see the grace of God working there? Our God, the source of love, formed us from the very ground. Though sometimes we become estranged from God, from our own hearts, from one another, we are reminded that through Christ, by the power of the Spirit, through faith, we are being rooted and grounded in love. Loneliness is disconnection, and love is connection. Here, in the body of Christ, we are being reconnected with every breath, with every prayer, with every act lived in hope. And one thing I think that this community does incredibly well is to love and embrace one another, to open wide the doors for the stranger, to serve with generous hearts. As more and more people fall prey to loneliness, this church is a good place to find a friend. And that is a holy thing indeed. Here you can be yourself and you can find Christ dwelling in hearts all around you. Week after week, I see you all offering this precious gift to one another, to visitors and to strangers, and it fills me with joy. Because we know that sometimes the smallest gesture roots out the weeds of loneliness and see what blossoms in the fields of love. And so, gracious God, lead us to our own moments of fairy connection, where strangers become friends, where hearts are strangely warmed, where your grace and peace spread farther than we will ever know. Amen. My friends, let us join together in the traditional Apostles' Creed as our affirmation of faith this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
may be seated. My friends, it is easy in loneliness to believe that there is no one with us, but God is always with us. It is easy in company to think that you will never think your own thoughts again, but it is true that God cherishes what we think and holds us close. God has given us so much, time, talent, and treasure. And so it is only right that we return to God a portion of what God has given us. Let us therefore bring forth God's tithes and our offerings, either in person or online. You can give at trinitychurchbixby.org slash give. God, bless these gifts to the building of your kingdom. Let them be used to bring community where it is needed and loneliness and alone time where that is needed. Let these gifts be used to build up the kingdom using the gifts of all together. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. My friends, we come now to the prayers of the people time of the service. And we lift each other up in prayer in good times and in bad. What joys and concerns do we bring forward this morning? Yes, Evelyn. Absolutely. Um, we will hold Lynn in our prayers uh, in this time of health issues and seeing specialists. Other joys, yes, or concerns. Faith and David's grandson arrived this week um, and is doing pretty well, although there's some questions about the feeding issues, but keeping the mother awake for 72 hours is a difficult thing too. We'll hold the whole family in our prayers. Other joys or concerns this morning? Yes. Uh, Ben's sister, Liz, is having some health concerns, and we need to hold her in prayers because they need to find out what's going on, and it's diagnostic time. Yes, Cindy.
absolutely. Cindy's friend Charles um, had an injury to spine and is recovering, uh, but is still in a lot of pain and the prognosis is not good. Let's hold Charles in our prayers. Other joys or concerns? Nancy. We will hold in our prayers those who have chosen not to be vaccinated uh, for one reason or another, hoping that we will find a way through and that we will practice safe distancing and all the things that are needed when uh, vaccination isn't possible. Chosen. Other joys or concerns? My friends, let us bow our hearts as we pray to the Holy One. Holy and beloved God, pray for your presence with us today. Hold us close. Help us to know your love, care, and concern. As we pray for those who are sick or injured, we pray that you would bring your shalom, your peace and wholeness, helping them be a part of healing not only the body, but the mind and soul with the need of community as well. We lift up to you, to you, especially this morning, Lynn, that you would be with her in the midst of these health concerns that she has. Help her and her specialists find the, the right way forward. We pray for Liz, that her health concerns would be able to be diagnosed. Be with her and her medical team let them find out what's happening and let them be able to solve it quickly and easily once it is found. We pray for Charles in the midst of the pain that he is suffering. Bring him relief, beloved God. Help him uh, to be at peace and in your holy love. We pray for Faith and David's new grandson. May he grow stronger and grow healthy in your love and in the love of a caring family. We pray for the rest of the family as well, for his parents and that you would be with them in the midst of, of this transitional time and this difficulty that they're experiencing as so many have. We know that your love is there. Help them to know that they can rely on you. And for those who have been unwilling or unable to take the vaccine, beloved God, May you be a shield of protection. Help them make wise choices. Help all of us to protect each other that this pandemic may come to an end. Help bring an end not of pain and death, but of joy that we have made it through to the other side. For all these things, beloved God, we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever.
And so, my friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage, hold on to what is good, but return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the weary, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing. And let all God's children say, Amen. <laughs>